Hey guys, welcome to Bethel Online. My name is Jason, I'm one of the pastors here, and we're so glad you decided to make us a part of your weekend. No matter who you are, where you come from, we're so glad you're here. Our vision is to be a safe place for real people to encounter the real Jesus and experience real change. Our hope and our prayer is that no matter who you are or what you've been through, you know that you are loved and you are wanted here. We would love to get to know you better and help you connect with all that's going on. You can do this by going to our website at www.bethel.us or by downloading the Bethel app. You can find our app by searching Bethel Putco in your app store. Both online and in the app, you can fill out digital connection card. It only takes a minute and it'll help us know how to serve you better. Another way you can connect today is through giving. Your generosity at Bethel directly impacts God's mission to radically change people's lives in Putnam County and beyond. Through the ministries of Bethel and the many local and regional organizations we support, people are able to see the grace of God and how much He loves them. You can always give on our website at Bethel.us forward slash give or in the Bethel app. Thank you for partnering with us and making a difference. Well, thanks again for tuning in online today. Know that you are wanted and welcome here, and you are loved. I hope you all have a great day. Good morning, welcome to Bethel Online. We're so glad you joined us for the first week in our series, Letting Go. Talking about the things that we need to let go of in order to live our best life and the life God has for us. Today I wanna talk about laying down our feelings of inadequacy. The world is screaming at us, screaming with expectations of who we should be. Many of us are screaming at ourselves with expectations, expectations that came from our family of origin, expectations that came from our education or even came from the culture that we grew up in. Those expectations can feel heavy. Maybe they come from the people that you love the most. And maybe those expectations come from your spouse or your children. Maybe it comes from one of the places that you've taken up some of your identity. Maybe it, those heavy expectations come from work and, and, and the media showing you where you ought to be at any given age. Maybe they come from your faith background and those expectations of who you should be. In reality, we were made by a God who created us with a purpose on purpose for his good and his glory and also gives us the capacity to do whatever he's called us to do. And so often we let the weight of the expectations that we and others have put on ourselves misguide and misdirect our life while failing to ask what God has for us. Because we're able through Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit to carry out exactly what God wanted on our own. We are not adequate, but as his children, we have everything we need to carry out his calling. And so today I wanna to charge you to lay down your feelings of inadequacy. Maybe you received unfair criticism that's begun to impact your identity and who you are and made you question whether or not you can do what you've needed to do or what God's called you to do. Maybe you've had some unrealistic compliments that have begun to make you feel the pressure to be something that you're not. Maybe You've had unwise comparisons made between you and other people, and comparison is one of the quickest killers of, our, of God's plan for our life when we begin to live by the plan of others. Today, I want to charge us all to drop all of the voices that are coming at us with expectation and begin to live with expectation 
of God to show up in our lives in incredible ways. I believe God is good and wants to do incredible and good things through your life. I believe that God wants to use your inadequacy to show his glory. I believe that ultimately by his power, God wants to give us the adequacy to carry out his calling. In psychology, we often have to rewrite the truth that we believe in order to take a step forward. If you're living in the belief that you are not capable or adequate in any way to carry out what God wants, we need to replace that with a truth. You see, what we really believe and ascribe to impacts our emotions and how we feel. And if we feel inadequate, we will certainly operate inadequately. If we believe that our accomplishing what we need to accomplish is fully upon us, we will wind up believing we are inadequate. The truth is not, I'm inadequate. The truth is that God is adequate to do through his creation in me whatever he has called me to do. In psychology, we call it cognitive cycle. And the only way to change the cycle of behavior and action is to change the truth. And we operate differently when we truly embrace God's goodness for our life, when we truly buy into God's adequacy to accomplish what He wants to through our life. It changes how we feel. And how we feel impacts how we act. There's a story in Judges chapter 6, verse 11 through 16, and I love this story. It's written during a difficult time in the life of God's people. The Midianites, the enemy, had been crashing down on God's people. So much that they were all kind of going into hiding and just trying to stay off the radar, trying to live like God's people, but they were doing it as if they were inadequate to be God's people. They were running out of fear that God wouldn't protect them from the Midianites. And rather than acting like the people of the sovereign God, they were all kind of hiding. And the story is that an angel of the Lord came, that an angel of the Lord came and encountered a man named Gideon. It said the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Abazarite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. Here we find Gideon threshing wheat. Now to understand the process of threshing wheat, the way you thresh wheat is to throw it in the air over and over and over again so that the valuable part of the wheat falls to the ground and be collected. And everything else will float away. The chaff and the loose leaves and the the parts to the plant will fall away so that the grain can be stored and then used. The ideal place to thresh wheat is on a windy hilltop. It's similar to what would happen if a person went screening for gold, that the gold would go to the bottom and everything else would go downstream. And what Gideon is doing here is what he needs to be doing as a part of God's people. But he's doing it in a place that's not going to be sufficient to accomplish his goal. The wine press, on the other hand, where he's at, would have been down in the ground where they would have stomped and smashed grapes, where they would have processed the, the, the fruit <clears throat> to make the wine. There would have been no wind there. It would have been the least ideal place. We are in the least ideal place to operate when we are when we are believing that we're inadequate. And so while Gideon is trying to do the job in his own effort in the wrong place and struggling, I love that God sends the angel to come speak to him. God is not afraid to speak to us 
in our fear of inadequacy, but he will speak into us the adequacy that comes from him. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon in verse 12, it said, he says to Gideon, <clears throat> the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Now, I personally think God has a sense of humor. And God has sent this angel, and the angel is telling him, you're a mighty warrior. But Gideon looks nothing like a mighty warrior. He's acting like nothing like a mighty warrior. And it looks as if he doesn't feel much like a mighty warrior. I mean, it would have seemed more appropriate for the angel of the Lord to speak into Gideon, you little weenie coward, what are you doing? But instead, the angel speaks truth into Gideon in regard to God's expectation on his life and God's identity for Gideon. Gideon's identity has been wrapped up in fear. Fear of failure, fear of the Midianites, fear of a collapse of God's people. But God, when we encounter him, he gives us a new identity. And while he looks like a little coward, God was giving him the name of a mighty warrior. God was calling him up. <clears throat> while Gideon was accomplishing very little for good, when his identity began to be impacted by the words God spoke into him, God began to use him. After he's spoken into as a mighty warrior, he says, pardon me, my Lord, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all of his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, did the Lord not bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hands of Midian. Really, the problem wasn't so much that God had given them to the people of Midian, it was actually that the people had allowed themselves to operate under the people of Midian because they didn't believe that they could move forward as God's people. And the Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength that you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? What, what God is saying is, I'm not asking you to be sufficient. I'm asking you to go in my name. Go in the strength you have. Go with what you have. See, the joy of going in, what, in, in the tasks of God and being inadequate is in knowing in the depth of our heart God is adequate. And the way to figure that out is to go in our strength and trust in God with his word. He says, am I not the one sending you? Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon says. Gideon's got some comebacks some excuses about why he can't or why he's not enough. But how can I save Israel? My clan's the weakest in Manasseh and I'm the least in my family. He's like, I'm not even, I'm not even from the right clan of people who are accomplishing things like this. And I'm not even the right guy in my family. Like I'm just simply not enough. Like I learned in my family, I'm the little one. I learned in my family, I'm the one who's can't get it together. I, I've learned that my family isn't even that great. Like people like me, people like us, we don't do great things. We don't free an entire nation. We're just people in the nation. He hasn't yet bought into what God can do. And the Lord answered his response to the excuses is I will be with you and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. And actually, God uses Gideon in an incredible way. And I'm sure that after God uses Gideon in this incredible way, that Gideon now understands God's adequacy for his life. But he could never understand God's adequacy for his life until he stepped in to God's calling for his life. You see, it's about identity. It's about asking this question of who am I? But I think the real question to ask is who is God? Who is the God in me is a better question about our identity because God gives us the identity of the mighty warrior rather than the little coward. He's a good God with good plans for his kids. 
And I think there's some things that we need to know about us that we need to hedge our identity in, that we maybe need to say out loud. The first is that God's view of you is different than you think. You, you might think that God thinks of you as other people think of you, and they see your inadequacies from their viewpoint. And you may think that God is, sees you as you see you. But see, the reality is that God in his sovereignty knew when he made you who you would be and where you would grow up and what you would go through and how you would believe about you. But God's view is much different than ours. I love it that in Judges 6.12, the angel of the Lord is calling Gideon a mighty warrior. I don't think that Gideon had looked in the mirror and that morning and said, look at you, buddy. You look like a mighty warrior. I think he had been throwing the wheat up and thinking, I'm not even good enough to thresh this wheat. I'm not even able to separate what is good and bad in this single crop here. And I'm, I'm not even good enough to go out and do it where it needs to be done. I'm, I'm going to hide down here to do it. I don't think Gideon yet saw himself for who God saw him as. Friends, this is one of the most important things that we can teach our children, our teens, and this is one of the most important ways that we can show them who they are in Christ is by living out our trust and our faith in who God called us to be. And I believe in the same way that God called Gideon a mighty warrior and called him up, that for many of us, it's the very inadequacies that we feel that God is giving us a new name. It's what happens, we say all the time, when real people encounter the real Jesus, they experience real change. What that really means is when inadequate people meet an adequate God, things happen. And Gideon had this encounter. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 10, the Apostle Paul says, We are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. We're God's masterpiece, not God's mess up. We're God's pride, not His shame. God created us for a purpose and gave us the ability to carry out things he planned long before we existed. Number two, God has given you more than you think. You see, God had already implanted circumstances, situations in Gideon to instill some toughness. Let's be fair. Let's give Gideon some credit. He had survived some difficult times. And God had given him some strength and some ability. He tells him to go in his strength. Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. And then he promises that he's going with him. My friend, God has given you more than you think. Others may be screaming that you're inadequate. The world you're in today might be telling you you're not where you should be and you're not up to what you could be and you should be better and you're not where you should be right now, but God has given you more than you think to get to where you're going. As a matter of fact, there's this recurring theme in scripture of God meeting broken people needed, needing healing encountering them and healing them and not only healing them but redeeming them by how he used what was formerly viewed as their weakness to show his strength god has given you more than you think in second peter 2 1 through 3 says he has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who has called us by his own glory and goodness that God's given us what we need. Number three, it's less about who about you than you think. See, Gideon, when this was brought to him, he was 
talking about, I, I come from the wrong clan. I come from the wrong people. But he was forgetting the God whom his people came from. Gideon was talking about he couldn't and I can't. And all the reasons why, but it really wasn't and isn't about Gideon. The world will scream at you to live its purposes, but you were made for God's purpose. And it's not as much about you as you think. The world will constantly tell us that we're at, we're at our best when we think highly of ourselves, but we're actually at our best when we're thinking most highly of God. It's not about you. It's not about me. The story of Gideon is not really the story of Gideon. It's a part, a small part of God's bigger story. And when the Lord answers, I'll be with you and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. It was a part of an event so much bigger than Gideon. It was one more time of God showing the redemption of his people who had been disobedient. It was one more time of God showing the people his love for them despite their inadequacy. It really isn't about, am I adequate? It's about the fact that I walk with an adequate God. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Now listen, prosperity doctrine teachers would tell you that to name the thing you want to do, to name it and claim it. <clears throat> and if you want it bad enough, you can do it. And it's left thousands of children begging God to help them win games and dunk basketballs and all of these things. And this isn't what the passage is saying. That somehow if I want to be rich bad enough, I will become rich enough. That if I... And the reality is, this passage is about accomplishing God's will for our life. I can do all things that God has called me to through him who gives me strength. First off, are you living for the purposes of God? And second of all, the question is not who am I? The question is who is I am? You see, when God revealed his name to his people, he named that he was a protector. He named that he was a provider. He, he named the attributes of his character. Every single one of them were revealing his, in, his adequacy. So that when we begin to take on the identity of one of his kids, we carry the adequacy that we need. Maybe the feeling of not being adequate enough on your own is not a bad feeling. It's the knowing of who God is that allows us to carry out what we could have never on our own. I love you, Bethel. Have a great week. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Are you ready to take your next step? We would love to hear from you. You can send an email to hello at Bethel.us. You can send us a message on Facebook, or you can let us know in the Bethel app. And speaking of the Bethel app, take a moment, if you haven't already, to go to your app store and search Bethel Putco to download our app. There's all kinds of great resources in the app. You can listen to messages. You can view the messages for Sunday morning. And you can also fill out a digital connect card. You can do that today and each week to let us know that you're tuning in. You can also find some great information about our Bethel Kids Ministry and our Be The One Student Ministries. Also in the app, you can give. It's one of three ways you can give. With online giving at Bethel.us slash give. In our app, Bethel Putco, or through text. Hey, thanks again for joining us. We hope you have a great day and know that you are loved.